Nathan Barr, an Emmy winner for Hollywood, along with four other nominations, who's wrote the great music for the Hulu comedy series, The Great. Uh, Nathan, uh, coming into season two of the show, what were your overall goals for the music, I guess? And love to start there. And, and what were your thoughts basically coming in? I mean, I have two like amazing collaborators on the show uh, and Tony McNamara and Marianne uh, McGowan. Um, they're both just amazing people to work with. They they love music. They understand the role music is uh, supposed to play on the show. And the tricky thing about The Great has always been to the tone of it. Um, uh, in the beginning, when I came out on season one, it was like this knife's edge, right? Where we could walk. We could get too hokey too quickly or uh, too heavy handed and... So I think the thing that gelled between us was just sort of an understanding of, of what the show needed to be tonally. And then the performances really sort of define that as well. I think Al and Nick are just both amazing. Um, so yeah, it was just sort of to continue the journey. We had uh, uh, Al's mother show up uh, in a great cameo this season, which was really fun. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the deal. So like, does it like, I guess, do you get the scripts for like how did like are you immediately like, when you I, get the scripts you're like thinking about like right away like how it could sound and, and how does that come together i mean i just uh i i rarely read the scripts because i like to experience the show as a fan I've, I've always made that my practice um if i like the show and i could just sort of see it for the first time during spotting i get to enjoy the actual show as a as an audience member and i think bringing that enthusiasm and excitement to the scoring process is really helpful uh, uh, for me. So, so, uh, unless there's like a pre-record or something, uh, which there are a couple of this season, um, I, then I, then I don't read the scripts. There were two couple of great scenes of sequence, uh, or sequences this season. One is the sort of what we call the sex dance between Nick, uh, Nick and Al. Um, and that, that needed to be pre-recorded. Uh, so, uh, my assistant Harry played viola violin. I played cello, uh, and then that was sent to the set and they learned it, danced to it. And that was really cool. Uh, and then there's a, a rag dance, we call, which is where they're um, skating along the floor in the beginning, the, the servants uh, polishing the floors with the rags tied to their feet. Uh, and that was another one that was done to the music. So, yeah. I love the sex dance cue. I was listening again this morning. All of your, it's a great <laughs> score to listen to just in general, but I was like, Oh, and it's like so good. And I was I perked up and I was like, what is this one called again? And uh, I guess, can you talk about that? Cause I think it's so great. And like, what were your inspirations for that or whatever? I just love that cue. It's, and it's so, it's not very long and it's makes such an no. impact. obviously. Yeah. I mean, and their, and their choreography is so like wonderfully goofy and fun and, so they really rose to the task that the choreographer and the, and, and the two of them. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's always like, right. It's just super under the deadline. We need this tomorrow. So half the time you're not thinking about it. You just know the show you've absorbed the show. And, and I, I think I just sat down and whistled something to Harry, the tune, and he started playing it. And I started playing the chords on the cello and recorded it and sent it in in half an hour, which is when they needed it. So <laughs> it was okay. Sense. Sometimes those are the coolest things though, right? You know, when you can't overthink it, you just got to do it. And, and I think all of us on this call as film composers are, uh, TV composers are really, uh, are, you have to be good at that. Yeah. So you mentioned like the show is obviously on that like razor's edge and stuff, I guess, like, I don't know. Do you learn, like, are you more confident in the, in the way you're writing music for season two, having known the tone is so right in season one and like, kind of like, how did that help this season? I mean, the, the hardest part about this show is that the score is broken up into so many cues. So I think last, last season we had an episode with like uh, 20, 20 or 22 minutes of music and, and it was broken up into 30 cues. So it's a, it's a lot of work. Um, and the overall impact of the score is there, but it's just broken up a lot. So um, I would say um, that's the, the the most challenging thing about about working on the show. And it's that's just the nature of the show. Right. There are a lot of segues in and segues out and uh, and transitions. And then when a cue actually shows up on my plate, that's like a minute or a minute and a half. I'm so excited. End of last season, they said, I think we're going to do a main title season two. I'm like, that's fantastic. I'm like, what, what are we looking at? 60 seconds, 90 seconds. They're like, oh, we're looking at nine seconds, like nine seconds. So that's definitely like the shortest main title I've written. I've written some short ones before, but, uh, but you know, it's like a challenge, right? So I, I wrote something pretty crazy, busy and, uh, and insane, uh, which was, I think exactly right for the show, uh, given the crazy energy of the characters this season, but it, but it, but it, it was pretty funny to, uh, to, to only get nine seconds to do so. 
it's it's pretty i mean like that's so wild like is this as a com- you like i said you've done like many different shows and like a lot of success as a composer are you like filing away things or like how does that like are you like oh like do you like have little snippets where you're something like oh like nine seconds i can maybe i thought of this like seven months ago maybe i could do it or something how does that come together for you <laughs> Yeah, no, again, I think it's just more by the seat of your pants, just running with it. Like, I rarely have an idea that gets tossed in in something that comes up later. Um, So, uh, yeah, so this was, again, one of those things where they needed it, like, yesterday, and and I had, like, you know, an afternoon to write it, and I just really quickly wrote it. And uh, But, again, I think there's something, when you're uh, put on the spot uh, in such a way, I think it more more often than not, it yields really good results. I didn't know before I got into this business, if I was good with pressure and deadlines and all that. And as it turns out, you know, I would get nothing done without pressure and deadlines. (laughs) It's good when you have a, you know, proverbial, you know, when you're under the gun, I guess it does does help a little bit. Exactly. Exactly. So obviously like the, the show is historical fiction or whatever you want to call it. It's like, you know, it's not, not beholden to to history though. It is based on history. Just like, are you, I mean, maybe not based on what you're saying, but do you go back, like, are you thinking of the era musically or how do you kind of like try to reflect that versus like what you're doing with the score? Cause it doesn't, it obviously sounds like to me as a, as a novice and not an expert in history, I'm like, Oh, it sounds like something that is, is appropriate for the time, but also in a modern sense. So how do you kind of like try to balance that? I think again, that was like how I came to the show was they had they had auditioned a bunch of different people and um were having trouble um getting getting lifting it out of strict period into something more contemporary. So my demo to them was like a violin with a bunch of synth, which they really liked. Um I just uh sort of threw out the the rule book. Uh so yeah, it's just really about um I, I love Tony's sensibility around the story, right? He takes these historical characters kind of squints at them and then does like kind of whatever the hell he wants with them. And I think that's partly why the show is such a success and so funny and appealing and surprising. And, and, and so the score, you know, follows suit. So there's definitely like a lot of like anachronistic, like synth stuff happening with the orchestra uh, throughout the show, which I think again, lifts it above the sort of straight period approach, which, which the show is not. And therefore the music doesn't want to be either. Um, Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned watching it as a fan too. Obviously the Catherine and Peter relationship is so complex. How do you like, you know, how, how are you writing music to that and making sure like they're like, are you reflecting their relationship and the tension of their relationship in the score, I guess? Yeah. I mean, I think again, because it's all these short little cues, it's not a traditional show where there are a lot of like very specific themes for specific characters. And I didn't know that going in, but just as I've been writing, like it's really, every cue on some level is a new thing in the show. And that's what it wants. I don't know why it wants that necessarily, but um, I'm certainly their relationship is one of the things like, he's just so completely arrogant and uh, misogynistic and and horrible. Um, And yet he's got, uh, you know, he's going to help have a child with her. And so that, that, that sort of emotionally connects her to him. And so, yeah, it is an incredibly complicated and I think tied again together in that sex dance where it's, where it's like, you know, it's this constant push, pull, push, push, pull, pull. It's playful. It's dark. He's going to kill her, but then he loves her. And uh, so, yeah, the score needs to needs to reflect all that. You mentioned that sex dance again, but is there a, a, a was there a cue or something that you were like really excited by or proud of beyond like that one for this season? I mean, the the uh, Catherine's mother, um, uh, <laughs> that sex scene with Peter, where she then goes out the window <laughs> at the end. <laughs> It's kind of a really fun uh, and and uh, a bizarre cue to write, uh, and that 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 allowed me to use kind of the full orchestra in a way, and then also um, uh, with synth elements. So yeah, I mean, you know, you 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 uh, you just go go as you go as you go, and 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 at the end of the season, take a look back at, at what you've done, and some things stand out more than others, and and there's a lot in this show that I'm really proud of. So, uh, have you already started thinking about what you would do for next season of the show? No, I haven't. Okay. They're, they're, Tony, Tony's writing right now. Uh, he may be through most of it and they're going to start shooting soon, but I have no uh, thoughts at this point about it. I mean, one of the things that's really, the score is really, and the, and the process of the dub is very dynamic. So uh, just because I've written it and they've signed off on it doesn't mean it's going to go on the show. You know, they, they very much watch it with fresh ears, fresh eyes from a story perspective on the dub stage. So regularly I'll write stuff, which, which, Rightfully so, they decide, oh, we don't we don't need this little heavy handed here or we do need this thing here. 
Um, so there's a there's a real fluidity uh, and, and uh, uh, in in the in the dialogue between us and the, and the process of getting the music into the show that's that's uh, challenging and exciting. When that happens, do you like if they're not going to use something, do you save it for something else? Or how, yeah, you, or, yeah, hopefully, yeah, yeah, absolutely, hopefully I do. And and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, hopefully that's the yeah that's the case. And and there are some really interesting instruments this season as well. There's a, something called a hecklephone, which is a sort of a, a strange cousin, I guess, of the bassoon. Uh, and that, that shows up uh, with the ambassador uh, in, in, in this, along with the baritone, electric baritone guitar. So there's that anachronism again of those yeah. two things together. And it, it, I don't know, it's just cool. It's fun to play with. Most people will never notice, but, but uh, you know, it, in the back of my head, I, I think, uh, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's excellent to listen to as well. Uh, Nathan Barr, composer for the great, uh, you can watch all the episodes on Hulu. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you.